out of my life. I've wanted to talk to you for so long. This is awesome. I've enjoyed so many of your roles, iconic roles, another power for, from Boardwalk to The Wire to all these great performances. Is that kind of a prerequisite? Before we talk about when they see us, is that a prerequisite for you for select, selecting roles, these really deep, meaningful, impactful roles? I, I wish I was that savvy to say that I picked these roles. These roles picked me. They chose me. Um, and it's a journey. I learned something from every one of them. I learned from Omar, from Chalky, from Freddie Knight, you know, from Jack G. <laughs> I learned, and I learned a heck of a lot from Bobby. So um, I wish I could say that, you know, I'm navigating, and it's the other way around. They're na I'm navigating them, they're navigating me, and I take the journey. Switching now to when they see us, How, are you surprised at the reception? You know, there are a number of people who are still alive to remember when this uh, occurred initially. Have you been, has it been surprising just to see it catch on like wildfire since it premiered on Netflix? I'm not surprised at all. No, uh, this is, you know, timing is everything. And um, I'm, I'm, I am so proud of, uh, of Raymond and Youssef and Antoine and Kevin and, 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 and oh God. And I'm getting old, but I'm blanking out on my brothers. I, I'm proud of them because they didn't know them. They didn't jump at the first chance to tell their narrative. They waited for the right opportunity to tell their narrative, and they couldn't have picked a better person than Ava. So um, to tell their story now in this climate that we find ourselves in as a nation, I thought was, I mean, you can't buy this kind of time, and you can't plan for this. This is, this is um. So, you know, <laughs> divine appointment, you know, with uh, the climate in D.C., with the climate in our country, especially in my community in regards to how the police, how the relationship between police, the police department the police com and, and the community is so broken. This story needs to be told so we can see where it's broken at and hopefully start the, start the, the, the narrative to begin to change it and fix it. What was particularly compelling about your performance to me, not to, not only the story of the Central Park Five, but just the relationship with your on-screen son and just that emotional quotient with between the dynamic between a father and a son, trying to guide him to do the right things, the wrong things. Did that conjure up any feelings of you in your own life, or how did you draw that energy to add those nuances and things to that? It drew, I drew a lot from my personal experiences, you know. As a son who lived in New York, I could have easily been my mother and me, and now I'm a father in New York City. And, you know, um, parent, parenting is not perfect. You know, they, these kids don't come with instructions. You do the best you can. And um, it, it, I pulled on, and especially my, my relationship with my older son, uh, I pulled on a lot of the bad choices I made as a father to him. Uh, and I used that for this I took that journey and uh, it was painful to look at very very painful it has also been interesting, you know, with the, since the show, since the series has premiered, a lot of people are saying that social media should become required viewing for, for high school students or just uh, people in education in general. Does that add any additional pressure to, to go out and talk to the public and selecting future roles or just how do you react to hearing that type of news if you haven't already? I'm doing that already. Yeah, I, you know, I was doing that with a, a project that I I produce with HBO. It's a documentary called "Raised in the System." We take a look about the at, we take a look at the juvenile uh, criminal justice system, and long after the lights and cameras stop rolling, with the rollout, my nephew and I we took the piece and went into the communities and started screening it for ourselves to keep the to keep the dialogue. And it's not just oh, watch the watch the doc, and it's not just watch the doc and listen to us talk. It's watch the doc, listen to us talk, and then what do you have to say? And that's where the magic happens. We give the mic to the audience, and everybody starts commenting and things like that. So um, I hope to uh, get with the brothers, and particularly uh, Youssef, Youssef Salam. He's a he's a we're, we're both ambassadors for the Innocent Project. And um, you know, if you if you'll have me, I hope to to go around around the country and screen screen and talk. When I talked to Nisi a second ago, she said she's become now involved as well. So that might is that the is that the next move, the kind of the offshoot from this project for you guys to continue to posse up and go out there and keep working. I would hope I would hope that I hope that you know everyone would do something, whatever that something is for them. 
I just hope that everyone will, that, that was a part of this project, that was blessed to be a part of this project, will not just forget about it. That would be a terrible disservice to what they survived. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a tremendous pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so